you gotta know where you're going first of all. Home Depot, Lowe's, maybe you own a wood shop, who knows? Get the wood. All kinds of pieces, big pieces, little pieces, thick pieces, thin pieces. Uh, I guess that would be your preference. A personal preference. Expensive, not expensive, again, preference. First, you gotta prime the wood. You wanna do this because if you don't, you end up you end up using a lot of paint. A lot of acrylic paint. The wood will soak it up. It'll eat it all in. So priming it. I use the light gray, you know, white. But I like the light gray. I don't know why. That's probably because I have a whole lot of it. <laughs> so, prime away. Priming, priming. I like to cover the whole thing, just in case. I don't know what part I'll end up using, where the, where I'll end up drawing it out. I, don't, I have not, no idea. So I prime the whole thing, corner to corner. Cartoons you're doing, you gotta find some cartoons, right? You gotta know, at least some inspiration. DuckTales, Spider Man, Mad Magazines are always good. Scrooge, this classic, classic Scrooge. What's that? Psst, more Spider Man. More Mad. Ooh, Casper. I didn't do that yet. Oh, Roger Rabbit. That's a good one. I haven't done him yet. Thor, great. Beetle Belly, total classic. Oh, I did that. Kaboom. Oh, Veronica, super classic. Jughead, same difference. So, boy. Racer X. I'm still stuck on that one. Oh, now you need paint. Get your paints together, get your colors together. I guess after you chose your cartoon or what you're doing, get your colors together so you know what colors you're using. Bases, I use all kinds of different paints. Cheaper paints, the backgrounds. Now we draw. I couldn't draw and hold a camera at the same time. Now, what's this? It's a dollar bill. For one of the money team, I guess. I don't have much footage of me, actually. It's hard to do that and hold the camera. At the same time. Obviously, now it's time to paint. <laughs> Get started painting with it. Paint some of it. I don't finish a lot of it, I just paint some of it. So I know where my outlines are. I tend to, I tend to uh, cut before I can finish completely painting. <clears throat> so here I put the black outlines on, so I know, so I know where to cut at. <laughs> trying to keep my lines, just trying to keep my lines straighter when I cut. Cutting with the pencil marks. Mm, not my favorite. See? This was a custom screw somebody. For commission. Haha. <laughs> Scrooge that somebody ordered. 
came out real good too. I don't think I showed the finished product in this video. Maybe I'll add it, I guess, at the end or something. Because you'll be curious. Like, hey, what happened to that Scrooge? As you can see, it's not anywhere near done. But not even halfway painted. And I'm cutting it. Because that's when I like to cut. Buzz, buzz. That was taking too long. We gotta speed through that real quick. <laughs> speed through this. The Dremel. I'm using the Dremel 4000. It cuts really nice through, this, through the half inch board. The Dremel 4000. I think on one of my. I probably use like about. I probably go to anywhere between 25 and 30. I have the other Dremel too, but it only goes to 10. That's the, that makes a mess. You don't get nice clean cuts with that. You do with thinner wood, but with this thick wood, you the 4,000 is, is it. You can use the 3,000, but you're gonna do a lot of sanding. A lot of sanding. So I would recommend the 4,000 or something equivalent. But they have that roto zip thing. The roto zip roto saw. It probably does a good job also. Personally, I like the Dremel. It feels like I'm drawing. It feels like a pencil in my hand. A giant marker slash pencil. <laughs> Helps me get nice contours. Nice curves, nice shapes. A lot easier. That roto, the roto zip is much bigger. Not as, not as small and easy to handle as that Dremel 4000. Change the tip, change the bit. Sandy mug. The sandy. I do not let that much dust and sawdust gather all on your Dremel. That thing broke. I think it got too full of dust. I wasn't cleaning it good enough, I don't think. Okay, well, you know what to do. Now if you've sanded, you've cut, time to paint some more. Paint again. Paint your other color. Yep, paint some more. <laughs> I guess we went back. Okay, don't forget to paint the back now. If you painted the front, you got that all done. Make sure you paint the back up. You don't want that wood exposed. Again, use your, your paint of preference. I like to use a flat paint on the back. Because eventually I spray it. Uh, since it's all done, paint until we finish. It's a Marvin up here. Paint until it's done. Once it's done, you know what? No resin on them yet, just all painting this. Finish it, the artwork, painting them all the way in. Now it's time to mix some resin 
half and half. It's a 50-50 situation. No matter how much you use, you use half and half. I don't measure with scales and all that. I don't I don't do that. Same size cups. Even is good. You don't need to scales and all that hot mess. I guess if you got it, use it. Well, I got scales, but I don't use it for that. It seems unnecessary to me. 50-50. The same amount of each into a separate container. And put it in the same container. Mix it well. Pour it in that same container. Make sure it's the proper plastic so you can get that stuff out of there, even when it dries. I'm not sure of the name of the plastic. I'll put it there. I'll put it somewhere. And mix away. I prefer the paint sticks from Home Depot. I can use them over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it gets hard at the end, nice and clear. And I use it again. Mix, mix, mix. This is some super glaze that I got actually at Home Depot found that I needed much more so I don't really get that anymore okay now that you've mixed it's time to pour personally I like to do it in sections and I pretty much shouldn't have put the other layer on before I resin this layer but I compensated for it. A few methods to this. I find that the zigzag method works best for me. Putting it on is pretty easy. It'll settle. Just make sure your surface is even. The, uh, the resin will pretty much settle. Make sure you put enough on though. You don't put enough on, it's not, it's not enough to settle. I like to do it in sections. See how I'm still on this side of the art and I'm recorded sitting over there just waiting. No. Do it in sections, baby.
try to waste as little as possible of this stuff. I've seen, you know, I've seen people waste a lot of it to get, you know, I guess they're trying to get the thickest. But I find I'll just do it two or three times if I want it thicker. I won't pour it on ridiculously. Like that. I'll just, I'll actually resonate it two or three times. torch or if you prefer a heat gun to a blowtorch keep those bubbles out I find that if you have bubbles if you do end up with bubbles you can always reheat it with a heat gun and get the bubbles out just heat it up a little bit for me twice. <laughs> get the side, make sure you get the sides good. That's when you want it to drip. Personally I like the drips off the side. One of my favorite parts of it. And I leave them there. I don't I don't personally I don't wrap them away. I leave the drips. I like that. Okay, now heat it up with your blowtorch or a heat gun if you don't want to use your blowtorch. Leave it 24 hours, 36 hours, whichever one you I like 36 hours actually to 24 hours. Make sure you cover that when you, uh, while it's drying. Cover it up with some, some plastic, some plastic over it. Dollar store shower curtains make nice tents for for dust protection while drying yeah a dollar store shower curtain tent will do the job be creative with it that's a whole nother video I would tell you now but you know, we out of time for that so yeah just keep it covered 24 to 36 hours and after the flaming and now you gotta sign it you need to sign it I hope you sign it or not it's up to you maybe you don't want nobody to know you made that <laughs> but yeah uh, sign away go ahead and hit that like button on the video, subscribe to our channel. We'll be making more videos because we make plenty of things. And document what we make, sell what we make. So more videos coming. So subscribe to the to the channel. Hit the like button. Follow us on Instagram at Vote Anarchy. It's A N R K Y. 
put something up here. You'll see. So, till next time, we'll be back with more creative juices floating. Float.